So in this video I'm going to show you how you can take two ESP32 microcontrollers and connect them together via UART communication. But why would you want to do that? Well that's a good question. Compared to other microcontrollers like the Arduino Mega Pro, the ESP32 has far fewer I.O. pins. If your project requires more pins, then adding a second ESP32 effectively doubles the amount of pins available for your project. But why wouldn't you just use an expander, such as a PCF8575, to add extra pins when required? Well, although that is a practical solution for adding additional pins, there are other advantages to using a secondary ESP32 for your project. With dual ESP32s, you can split tasks between them to share the workload. Currently, I'm working on a prototype dual boiler smart coffee board for an upcoming video. There are many sensors on this project that require constant reading and calculating running averages to operate the machine correctly. For example, the Slave ESP32 takes several readings from the ultrasonic sensor and creates a running average. This calculated running average number is then sent to the Master ESP32 which then updates the display accordingly. Sharing the workload in this manner means the master ESP32 is quick and responsive for more time sensitive tasks. And since ESP32s are relatively inexpensive, adding a secondary one to your project is a cheap and effective solution to double the I.O. pins and processing power. That being said, let's move on to programming the ESP32s so that they can communicate with one another. In the video's description, I'll leave a link to download two folders with the example code for each ESP32. You can use the code as a template and add your own commands to suit your project. Here is a quick overview of the code. Here we've defined our UART pins as GPIO 17 and 16. Below that we have the heartbeat interval and timeout. The purpose of the heartbeat is to check that each ESP32 is correctly sending and receiving data. More on that later. Next, I've defined GPIO18 as an output pin which will be connected to an LED. Scrolling down further, we have the UART RTOS task that keeps track of sending and receiving data. The first section is used for outgoing data. Here we have the commands to send the heartbeat message to the slave ESP32. Below that we have the incoming data logic. First we have the logic to receive the heartbeat message from the slave ESP32. Then the logic to turn on the LED. Then the logic to turn off the LED. Lastly we have the logic for checking the time since the last heartbeat was received and printing an error message when appropriate. With the ESP32 connected to my laptop, I'll select the correct COM port and upload the code. With that done, I close the program and now open the ESP32 UART slave file. The code is more or less the same as the master, except for GPIO pin 18 is defined as a switch input. With the slave ESP32 connected via USB, I can upload the code. Next, I installed the ESP32 onto a breakout board and grabbed some jumpers and an LED with a 3.3K resistor. Here is the wiring diagram for the example code that I'm running. Only two wires are required for UART communication. Just keep in mind that the UART wires need to be crossed between the ESP32s. So pin 16 of one ESP32 to pin 17 of the other, and vice versa. Then the 5 volt pins are connected together. And next the ground pins are connected together. Then the LED is connected to pin 18 on the master. And lastly pin 18 on the slave is my input which I'll connect to ground when required. With the ESP32s powered up, I can short pin 18 to ground, which sends a message via UART to the master ESP32 
requesting that the LED be turned on or off accordingly. In the serial monitor we also see that the ESP32 is correctly receiving the heartbeat message. And if I disconnect the UART cable, after 6 seconds the ESP32 prints an error message informing us that we've got a communication problem, which is useful for troubleshooting. Inside the code I've created a couple of examples for adding your own messages to suit your projects. However, if you need help with coding, you can use ChatGPT to assist you. Here is a couple of tips for using ChatGPT for coding. First, specify what you need help with, and then describe the functions along with any pin definitions or hardware that you're using. Then supply ChatGPT with a copy of the program as a reference to build from. Then it will create the additional logic which you can copy and paste into the program. It doesn't get it right all the time, but 9 times out of 10 it does work. If you want to pick up an ESP32 or the breakout board I used in this video, there will be links in the video's description. So I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to check out the links in the video's description if you need the source code for the UART communication. If you enjoyed the video and found it useful, a like would be much appreciated. And if you want to see more videos in the future, you know where that subscribe button is. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.